I got my real first rad, like expensive $150 skateboard, all everything together when I was in seventh grade. It was a Jeff Kendall, two hands. There's one hand was doing a peace sign, the other one was ground. I was like, hey, it's fucking famous. It was cool. And I, uh, that was my life until I graduated high school, my life. Christian Hosoi was my favorite was a favorite skater of mine. Uh, Chris Miller, which is a buddy of mine now, but um, I always loved Miller's style. Like he just had such a cool, flowy kind of kind of style. Um, I, Matt Hensley is probably all time. Hensley was the first one to really make street skating cool, like so much cooler than in my mind ramp skating. You know what ramp skating? There are big airs and crazy spinning around and whatever. And here comes Matt Hensley, and he starts doing that kind of stuff off an embankment, you know, and I was like, wow. I saw him show up one time with dyed black hair and this, like, punk rock clothing. We were at Webb Park in Rancho Bernardo, an old place where people used to skateboard, and he was doing these 360 flip board slides down a set of stairs, and I was just like, I've never seen anything like that before. Because at that time, the only dude that was flipping the board like that was Rodney Mullen, and no one could even understand what the fuck he was doing, so it was just like a different category. We didn't even call it skateboarding. It was like math, <laughs> you know? Rodney Mullen was doing math and uh, everyone else was skateboarding. All my friends were skateboarders that were a little bit older than me and they were getting out of high school or graduated already. And so I would either ditch school or somehow get out early and we would go downtown San Diego and just skateboard all day. And I would sit there and just stare at all the girls that were like working down there, like business ladies. I always went my friend Dan Rogers, he was a professional. So he was really like trying to like skateboard, he had to stay good, you know? And I would just sit there, I couldn't do what he was doing. And I, and I just wanted to stare at the business ladies. That's what I remember about being like 17. I love hookups. I invented a trick called the rocking horse grind. It's famous within my tribe. It's, uh, it's a nose grind to a 5-0 to a tail slide kind of revert out, but you look like you're doing a rocking horse. It was famous. It's called a rocking horse grind. I used to work at a, um, at a place that served rotisserie chicken, and so I would get off work and I would just bring out these giant cases of rice, vegetables, tortillas, and chicken to a big tribal pack of skateboarders, and we would skate at this shopping center where I worked. And so we do that every night till about midnight, every single night. You know, when I when I was younger, skateboarding and music were so intertwined. Um, punk rock music and skateboarders were kind of one and the same kid, at least in Southern California. You know, I remember hearing bands like Big Drill Car and, and, uh, and so Danny Way had Big Drill Car in some of those parts and I was like, wow, you know. Dinosaur Jr., you know, there's like all these great bands that I grew up on that were a part of the skateboarding scene. It was, that's what, you know, that's, that's when I found my own independence and individuality you know I found like this is my my tribe of people and you're celebrating the fact that you're not like everyone else at high school in high school you don't fit in necessarily with your parents you know your family life probably sucks a bit and school everyone at school is just uh, not something you can relate to you know and then you have this group of dudes and you just travel around the city till late hours in the night blasting music and uh, and going as fast as you can
I think when you grow up as a kid, um, you, you know, you're always looking for your voice. You're always looking for your independence. You're always looking to find out who you are. Uh, with skateboarding, it was a means of transportation first and foremost. As a kid, you have a skateboard and you can get out and you can go somewhere. You can't drive yet, you know. So it's kind of like this is your tool, your vehicle to leave. And then we're kind of going, okay, well, it's my freedom. But it expanded from just transportation. It's something you do on your own. You don't need a whole team to play it with you. You just do it with your, and you can go skate by yourself. And I think that music did a lot of the same kind of stuff. I think that when you're when you're joining, you know, a band for the first time, you're trying to find your voice. You're trying to find that freedom to get in the van and get out of town. You're trying to figure out who you are, and by defining it through your music, the way you dress and who you hang out with. And um, for me, when we grew up, they were both one and the same. There, it wasn't skateboarding would never be a sport. Now it's it's obviously much bigger and grander, but um, I think the roots of it will always be there and, and, and that's always going to be, in my eyes, it's going to be freedom. Yeah, like Jake Phelps was like a big scary skinhead in our hardcore scene, you know, back then, or, you know, or 15, he's like 19, he was like a scary, you know, skinhead. And he just interviewed me recently in France. And I hadn't seen him since I was 15, I was just like, so I still was like, oh shit, it's that, the skinhead guy.